Show one. Tonight. Zachariah 11 controversy. So this is going to be a little lighthearted response to um, one of our beloved brothers that um, kind of challenged us um, on the understanding of uh, Zechariah chapter 11, verse 10. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give the correct understanding because, you know, brothers are going around saying that the most high broke a covenant with Israel in Zechariah the 11th chapter. So what we're about to do is, is we're going to give some understanding on what's going on in Zechariah 11 and actually speak about what's going on in Zechariah 11, uh, chapter 11 and 10th verse. We're going to start at the top and just, again, give understanding about what's going on in, in Zechariah. Zechariah is a, is a um, book full of heavy prophecy um, regarding Yahweh Shai and also regarding things that are going to come to pass um, in Jerusalem, right? And things that have already come to pass and then things that are going to come to pass, you know, here in the future. Um, and, you know, my elder didn't teach me this understanding because, you know, a lot of brothers, um, they seem to think that we we don't have the capability of studying. <laughs> we come from the so-called one West school of thought. You know, they don't think that we have the diligence, um, the due diligence to get up, read the scriptures and study on our own. Right. But when you deal with ambassadors of Christ, you'd be sadly mistaken if you think that we're not getting into this word and studying because that's what we do around here. So without further ado, um, Captain Mala, I keep go to Ze uh, Zechariah 11. Uh, start at verse one. Come. So this is the book of Zechariah, chapter 11 and verse one. And it reads. Open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. Right. So right off the bat, open thy doors, O Lebanon, that the fire may devour thy cedars. So check this out. Immediately when you first, the first verse is indicating some type of destruction. Because when you think about the cedars, those cedars were a symbol of strength. We had, you know, as far as um, our walls, you know, we, we had those cedars that were that were given that were brought by, um, I think it was King Hiram. And those cedars, very strong trees, a symbol of strength within uh, the foundations uh, of our city. Right. So go ahead out of one verse two. Verse two. How fir tree for the cedar is fallen because the mighty are spoiled. How. O ye oaks of Bashan, for the forest of the vintage is come down. Right. So the cedar is falling, right? The mighty are spoiled. So again, this, fi this fire has devoured all that. When you think about, let's take it to California for a second. When you, when you see those, wild, those wildfires in California, how that consuming fire is miles upon miles of, of, of fire burning down those trees, the same thing is going on here. For the forest of the vintage of of the um vintage is come down you know so it's, it's just, just a consuming fire from this destruction that's going on right go ahead verse three verse three there is a voice of the howling of the shepherds for their glory is spoiled a voice of the roaring of young lions for the pride of jordan is spoiled right so it says the voice of the howling of the shepherds because again, you know, the shepherds are the ones that looked over the flock, right? And so the howling of the shepherds letting, you know, letting us know that, you know, something um, horrendous has, has taken place. And so what we're reading about here in, in the uh, first three verses of Zechariah, we're reading about the coming destruction in 70 AD. That's what it's talking about. Um, if you can, I don't want to jump to verse six. Verse six. For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king, and they shall smite the land, and out of their hand I will not deliver them. Right, so it said, For I will no more pity the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. But lo, I will deliver the men, every one, into his neighbor's hand. So here we have um, the, uh, the works of Josephus, right? And I'm going to read out of War of the Jews, uh, book five, chapter one, uh, 1.4. 
And it says, and now there were three treacherous factions in the city. The one parted from the other. Eleazar and his party that kept the sacred first fruits came against John and their cups. So um, Eleazar and his faction, um, when it says they came against John and his cups, that means that as John and his and his crew were, were drinking um, and had, you know, drink a strong drink or whatever, um, Eleazar and his people ambushed them, right? So it said, um, Eleazar and his party that kept the sacred first fruits came against John in their cups. Those that were with John plundered the populace and went out with zeal against Simon. This Simon had his supply of provision from the city in opposition to the sedition. Um, let me see here. Uh, so basically, um, when you deal with um, what's going on in Jerusalem at this time, um, you know, you have gangs. There's infighting going on. In 70 AD, um, you had people like the Sicarii. You had all these different gangs within, within Jerusalem tearing each other apart. That's why the scripture says, and they shall smite the land. No, it says, um, I will deliver the men, every one into his neighbor's hand. Because again, your neighbor didn't, there was no pity for anybody. Everybody was just out for themselves. This crew versus that crew. You know what I'm saying? Because remember the Romans had a blockade. They blocked us in, you know? And so they starved us out. They just sat there and waited. And we are gonna get more um, from Josephus and from the law to show what type of things were taking place at this time in Jerusalem. Um, so out of one, um, again, Israel, we ain't gonna be on here very long. We just gonna bring it out. It ain't, it's gonna be like a, a meme milk Monday on a Wednesday night. Um, so out of one, can you jump to verse nine for me? This is verse nine. Then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. See that? The Most High said, I will not feed you. That that dieth, let it die. Whatever's going to die, let it die. And it says, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off. And it says, and the rest, and, and let the rest eat every one the flesh of another. I don't want, can you go to um, Deuteronomy? Chapter 28 and verse 53. We're going to read um, 53 to 57. All right, this is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Verse 53, and it reads, And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, mm. the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. You see that? Read that verse again. Read that verse again. Deuteronomy 28 and 53. And thou shalt eat the fruit of thine own body, the flesh of thy sons and of thy daughters, which the Lord thy God has given thee in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thy enemies shall distress thee. In the siege. This is talking about the siege of Jerusalem. It says, um, and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee. How did they have us distressed? Because they blocked the sin. We couldn't get food. We couldn't get water. None of that. You know what I'm saying? Like we were just completely blocked in. Um, go ahead, out of one, um, read to verse uh, 57, and then I, I don't have this in my notes, but we're going to jump to something that Yahweh Shah said. Um, but go ahead, verse 54. Okay, 54. So that the man that is tender among you and very delicate, his eyes shall be evil toward his brother and toward the wife of his bosom and toward the remnant of his children, which he shall leave. Mm -hmm. So that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat 
because he has nothing left him in the siege and in the straightness wherewith thine enemies shall distress thee in all thy gates. See, see and so we see it says, um, so that he will not give to any of them of the flesh of his children whom he shall eat because he has nothing left him in the siege. Again, this siege is dealing with the siege of Jerusalem, 70 AD, Israelite 101. We all, we all talk about this. We all know about 70 AD, the so-called Black Holocaust. That's Israelite 101, knowing about what went down in Jerusalem in 70 AD, right? And again, we read these things and we know that, you know, people outside of the community, like the comedic community, different people like that, they try to laugh and mock and say, oh, so y'all were cannibals? Listen, everything ain't sweet. You know, the most high... You know, our people, our forefathers, our foremothers, they sinned against the Lord in 70 AD was a culmination of the punishment that that he sent forth on us, kicking us out of heaven. And the things that went on during that ain't sweet. You know, it's you know, it's it's sad to see and hear about. But listen, that's our history. You know what I'm saying? They were they were in a siege and they went crazy and they started eating, eating flesh, eating their children. Go ahead, out of one next one. Right. Uh, can I say something real quick? Go ahead, come on, come on. Um, we, we know that the curses within Deuteronomy is like a cyclical thing, right? Every time Israel went off, they had to experience it, right? Um, one of the times within scripture, scripture where we first read about Israel having to eat their children was when um when the Assyrians besieged us, hmm. right? Um. So that was uh, the first time Israel was forced um, to <laughs> to eat their 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 own flesh, you know, their own children. And mm. So now, you know, as time went on, Israel continued to go off, and then when the Most High really began to bring the major judgment, you know, beginning at seventy A.D. with that siege, boom, happened right. again. And it's very barbaric, but that war is barbaric, <laughs> and you know, when you're trying to survive, you're forced to do things that you normally wouldn't do. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, it's our history. <laughs> Con. All right, so 55, no, uh, verse 56. The tender and delicate woman among you, which would not adventure to set the sole of her foot upon the ground for delicateness and tenderness, her eye shall be evil towards the husband of her bosom and towards her son and toward her daughter. And toward her young one that cometh out from between her feet and towards her children which she shall bear for she shall eat them for want of all things secretly in the siege and straightness wherewith thine enemy shall distress thee and thy gates see that see that that's crazy real quick out of one you could drop deuteronomy yeah i just wanted to show that in the curses that <laughs> it talks about what's going what it talked about in zechariah but let's get it out of your hour shot. Um, Luke chapter 21. See what he said concerning the siege. Come. So Luke 21. Um, and start at, start at verse 20. Verse 20. And it reads, And when ye shall see Jerusalem come past about with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let them which are in the midst of it depart out, and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Come, you see that? So he said, um, then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out and let not them that are in the countries enter there into because you was shot. No, what's going to go down? He telling them like, if you don't get out, hey, you know, and, and read verse 23, because here's what brings it home. Here's what brings it all together. Verse 23. Verse 23. But woe unto them that are with child. And to them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. 
you see that? Great distress in the land and wrath upon his people. And part of that was, our, you know, eating the flesh of the children. Um, I thought I had it highlighted here in the Jos Josephus, but I don't. But, you know, when you read in the War of the Jews, there's a story in here. Um, and I brought it out in one of the classes we did um, a while back um, where it talks about that mother, you know, eating the flesh of her daughter and how Josephus didn't even really want to write about it. You know, mm. so, you know, he was real, you know, real disgusted by it and real saddened by it. He didn't even want to, you know, he didn't want to write about it, but it's in here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's in the law, you know, it's in our history. We got it out of, you know, Deuteronomy and we got it, you know, um, it says it again here in Zechariah. It says, um, you know, let everyone eat the flesh of another, right? So now let's go back to Zechariah chapter 11. Um, we'll start at verse nine again, and then we're gonna get to um, verse 10. Um, and we're gonna you know, bring this point home. So this is Zechariah chapter 11 and verse nine, and it reads, then said I, I will not feed you that that dieth, let it die, and that that is to be cut off, let it be cut off, and let the rest eat everyone the flesh of another. Go ahead. And I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I which I had made with all the people. Uh oh, they see that with all the people, right? Because here's the thing: it's just simple reading comprehension at this point. Um, First of all, we got to understand something. The Most High didn't break his covenant with us. We did. Our forefathers and forefathers broke that covenant. How? Idolatry, breaking the law, disobedience, rebelliousness, all of that. They, they broke that covenant. It wasn't the Most High that did that. Why would the Most, the most High isn't like, he's not, he's not, he's not going to, he can't lie. He can't do any of that. That's not in him to do. He's perfect. So if he puts a covenant forth, it's not going to be him that breaks it. It's going to be us that break it, right? So um, we got to deal with this covenant that he broke, right? And what caused him to do this, right? Because um, it says, the, which I made with all the people. All the people is not Israel. Israel is one nation. So when he says all the people, he's talking about the other nations. And when I was when we were when me and the captain was on Facebook dealing with the brother that was, you know, charging us up about this this particular verse, I told him that. And he's like, Oh, come on, Ark. You know if you was at camp and you know, and somebody came up to you and you used that verse, you'd be like, I need the evidence. I want the evidence. You gotta you gotta back that up with scripture. No problem. Because here's the thing. We have to understand the most high, again, he uses various similitudes and personification in the Bible. So we're going to deal with this covenant he made with all the people, right? We told the brother, Captain Malak said, listen, we got you on the breakdown. It's not something that we're going to just give you a, a, a long lesson here on Facebook. It's not going to work that way. We'll get back with you. So here we go. Let's deal with all the people in this covenant that he made. If you can, out of one, go to Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 25. Here's this covenant. We're going to get it out of Ezekiel. We're going to get it out of Hosea. Ezekiel chapter 34 and what verse? Uh, start at verse 25. Verse 25, and it reads... And I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beasts to cease out of the land and they shall dwell safely in the wilderness and sleep in the woods. Go ahead. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing and I will cause the shower to come down in his season. There shall be showers of blessing and the tree of the field shall yield her fruit and the earth shall yield her increase and they shall be safe in the land and shall know that I am the Lord, 
when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. Uh-oh, here we go, verse 28. And they shall no more be a prey to the heathen, neither shall the beasts of the land devour them, but they shall dwell safely, and none shall make them afraid. The evil beast of the land that's dealing with the other nations. And we know that because when you deal with, you know, books like Revelation, where it talks about, you know, Revelation, Daniel, where it talks about um, these different beasts that rise up. Beast is always synonymous with nations or men. Now, when you deal with these evil beasts, it tells you that in verse 25 that he make. It says, and I will make with them a covenant of peace and will cause the evil beast to cease out of the land. The same evil beasts that prey upon us, the heathen, those other nations, right? I don't want to go to um, Hosea uh, chapter 2, verse 18. This is Hosea chapter 2 and verse 18, and it reads, And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field, and with the fowls of heaven, and with the creeping things of the ground. And I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth, and will make them to lie down safely. You see that? And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field. These evil beasts are that's dealing with nations. Because guess what? When the Most High broke that, 70, when he broke that covenant with the evil beast, he allowed them to come upon us. Um, let's go to, real quick. This ain't even in the notes, but um, let's go to the book of Judas really quick, right? Um, uh, go to Judas chapter 5. Um, verse 20. Watch this. This is the scripture that we, you know, we pull all the time to give understanding about how the Most High works with us. This is the book of Judith, chapter five and verse twenty. Now, therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. You see that? If we sin against the Most High, that's our ruin. If there's any error in us as a people, the nations knew that. You see what I'm saying? The nations knew that. And they knew that as long as we followed the Heavenly Father and we were obedient, they couldn't mess with us. It's right here. All we got to do is read. Read that again out of one. Judas chapter 5 and verse 20. Now, therefore, my Lord and governor, if there be any ever in this people and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin and let us go up and we shall overcome them. This will that will be our ruin. And sure enough, we sinned against the most high. And it's outlined here in Zechariah, the 11th chapter pertaining to 70 A.D. And in 70 A.D., where are we at now? We all woke up and most of us woke up here in America because we got kicked out of the land, kicked out of heaven, um, eventually sold off into slavery. And we haven't seen our homeland again. We still waiting to be delivered, which we will be. Thus said the Lord from Yahweh Shai, um, because he's going to be sent to redeem us. Now, let's see the flip side of 70 A.D., now we're going to see the flip side of um, the protection we're going to get from the Most High. I don't want let's go to Zechariah, the, the, the 12th chapter, and let's read verse 1, 1 through 3. This is uh, the book of Zechariah, chapter 12, and verse 1, and it reads, The burden of the word of the Lord for Israel, saith the Lord, which stretcheth forth the heavens, and layeth the foundation of the earth, and formeth the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about. When they uh -oh. shall be. 
All the people round about. All the people. Remember that term, all the people that's dealing with the nations. Because again, we read that in Zechariah 11, where he said, um, and I took my staff, even beauty, and cut it, cut it asunder, that I might break my covenant, which I made with all the people, right? The evil beasts of the land, these heathens that will put that when they found error in us, they were able to overcome us, right? Go ahead, out of one. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of trembling unto all the people round about, when they shall be in the siege both against Judah and against Jerusalem. And in that day will I make Jerusalem a burdensome stone for all people. Go ahead. All that burden themselves with it shall be cut in pieces, though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Though all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Now again, um, I know you brothers don't do very much studying. Um, Cause you, Y'all like to point the finger and say, oh, you one West Negroes, y'all don't study. Y'all just, your elders just lie to you, this and that. I'm going to throw you a bone. Zechariah 12, 1 through 3, you can read about that in Revelation 20. You can read about that in Ezekiel 38 and 39. When, when all the people shall be gathered against the nation of Israel. You can also read it about it in the book of 2 Ezra. Um when it talks about the return of Christ. Because um, <laughs> again, the, the Bible, you know, it does that. It's like, a, it's like a puzzle you put together. You know what I'm saying? So um, again, Zechariah 11, verse 10, is dealing with the covenant the Most High broke with the nations and caused them to come against us. He caused the nations to come against us. The Most High rules in the kingdom of men. He uses nations to judge other nations. And he has always used these nations to judge us. When there's error in us, here we go. Captivity. It's all throughout the Bible. Go to the book of Judges, for instance. When you read in the book of Judges, what happened? We sin, captivity, pray to the most high, takes us out, all rinse and repeat, <laughs> to do it all over again. That's what happens. And so again, all of the people is pertaining to all of the nations. And it said it perfectly again here in Zechariah chapter 12. And just so you brothers know that we do study, because again, you brothers always be saying that in error, talking trash, running off at the mouth saying brothers don't study. When you do read in the book of Ezekiel, it's going to say, come, let us go up against, um, let us go to the village. Uh, it's something about the unwalled villages because we're going to be dwelling in tents. And the nations are going to think an evil thought and they're going to come up against us. Why, why fight amongst each other when we can go to this man that's called Christ, the man that just came out of the sea? A great multitude is going to be gathered against us. And that's what it's talking about in Zechariah 12. But this time, the Most High is going to be for us. He's going to make us a burden, some stone. Whereas in Zechariah 11, it's talking about 70 AD. And, and the, the transgression was being finished. Like we transgressed, so the punishment, I, my by slip of the tongue, the punishment was being finished. That punishment, that ultimate punishment, 70 AD, which eventually led to us going into captivity. So again, Zechariah, the 11th chapter, is not talking about the most high breaking the first covenant with us because he wouldn't have broke that covenant. We broke that. Our forefathers and foremothers broke it. Because we sinned against the most high. It's right? funny that the understanding of it is right within the next chapter. Just a few verses on over. Right. It mentions all the people twice. The people round about. It says mm -hmm. all the people round about. Then in verse 3, it says the, all the people of the earth be gathered together against it. Meaning against Jerusalem, against Israel. Right. So in, in chapter 11 and verse, verse of that. Um, Ten. In, in 10, when it says all the people, all of a sudden in verse 12, all the people, now it's talking about somebody else. Right, right, right. Nah. And, you know, again, man, it's like, you know, it's not a hatred thing. It's no hard feelings. You know what I'm saying? It's just one of those things to where it's like, you know, brothers just get to running off at the mouth, man. Like, 
Diarrhea of the mouth. Oh, I asked two brothers from Ambassadors of Christ from AOC and a brother from House of David and none of them could answer my question. Slow down, brother. Relax. Brother, just slow down. You know what I mean? Slow, relax, slow down. Because you should be happy because the way you came up, brother, you said that, you know, you were, the elders lied to you. They twisted the scriptures and you didn't do, you know, wasn't very much studying going on. Now it's a new generation of brothers and we know how to study. We're, we're apt to teach and we, we're we okay with studying. And so again, um, when you made that statement, I was like, okay, let's give him what he want. <laughs> you wanted it, you got it. Hey, and I did say B wasn't gonna reply on your time, right. but I right. did, I promise you, we're gonna reply in our way on our time. Exactly. And so again, that's the understanding, man. Um, and it's funny because the most high operates like that. Because when you read in Hosea, the first three verses, he's telling us how he is not going to have any type of mercy on the house of Israel, the northern kingdom. But then what does he say by the 10th verse? In the land where it said, you're not my people, you'll be called sons of the living God. Because it's prophecy. The most high is writing the perfect movie. Zechariah 11, there's a siege, but that siege is to punish us. Zechariah 12, there's another siege with the, the same all the people. It's another siege, but this time it's for them. This time it's a rap for them. We're going to be a burdensome stone because we're going to have our king with us. And we read about that in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39. So unless the captain got something else, I'm going to say shallow warm. I'm going to stand down. Um, you know, and I hope brothers and sisters was edified. Um, we have our Q&As, um, our Shabbat Q&As every Saturday. Um, you can send an email to us at um, Alpha Omega Clan AOC 300 at gmail.com if you'd like to participate in those um, Q&As. And with that, I'm going to say Shalom. No, I don't have any uh, any closing statements, really. Uh -huh. no, we encourage Israel to study. Yeah, man, study. Make sure you study, man. Study. And and be, be, <laughs> before you study, learn the proper methods of studying. Exactly. You know, because there's exactly. they're studying without, you know, some people study without knowing the proper methods, and just they, a lot of people unfortunately think studying just reading a bunch of books and whatever it says, that's is truth. Now you got to be able to properly study and pick out what's wrong and what's right and mm -hmm. how to piece things together. You know, so. That'll be my closing statement. Kind of one. All right. Shalom, Israel. Stay in the spirit. Shalom.